The Raptor engine for Starship and Super Heavy is currently being developed and tested at SpaceX's engine testing site in McGregor, Texas, near south of Waco. The plant is likely to become a hub for Raptor 2 engine assembling with the five test bays, and a new plant is presently under construction. This happens while the engine and the stage tests for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy continue. You guessed it, today we are talking about SpaceX's new Raptor factory, the McGregor facility. But before that, we welcome you to our YouTube channel. Thank you all for your love and support. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to never miss a single update from the world of space. During World War II, the McGregor facility, which was once known as the Blue Bonnet Ordnance Plant, produced bombs. It wasn't until Philips Petroleum came along and started making GATO, JATO bottles, and ammonium nitrate that parts of the plant were repurposed for housewares production after World War II. Sidewinder, an other missile propellant, was later made at the Rocketdyne and Hercules Corporation facilities. In the mid-1900s, the facility was cleaned of ammonium percolate contamination and the city of McGregor acquired 3,500 acres of the original 9,600 acres that the facility used. Beale Aerospace began utilizing McGregor to test its BA-810 engine which was the largest liquid engine tested since Apollo, a deteriorating satellite launch industry, as well as losing NASA funding, forced Beale to shut down after three years in business. SpaceX officially leased the McGregor facility from the city and began operations there in 2003, a year after Elon Musk, the company's rich founder, sold PayPal to eBay for 16 billion US dollars. On March 11, 2003, the Merlin 1A engine began running tests at McGregor, Scotland. After the 1A type was utilized for the first two Falcon 1 launches in 2006, the focus shifted to the enhanced Merlin 1C and eventually to the 1D for the Falcon 9, a massive test platform for Falcon 9 first stage test firings known as the tripod as well as an additional testing facilities like as a stand to test second stages were added to the facility over time. In 2012, the Grasshopper rocket started flying thanks to the facility's expansion into flight testing. However, the McGregor engine testing site will be constructed near the new manufacturing plant, which Elon Musk recently revealed. This facility will construct Raptor 2 engines optimized for usage at sea level, the majority of which will go on super heavy boosters. The Raptor 2 is a future version of the engine that will soon be tested and the plant will be able to produce two to four of these engines per day. The facility's output is higher than that of a standard rocket factory, but it is lower than that of the automotive manufacturer. According to Elon Musk's tweet, the facility will be the world's highest production and most advanced rocket engine factory. He believes it will be required to enable high-cadence super-heavy operations, such as several flights to Mars, connected to the construction of the proposed Martian city. To add further, vacuum engines for space and high altitude, such as the Raptor vacuum engines for Starship, will still be constructed in Hawthorne, as well as other experimental designs that are still being developed. The McGregor facility now includes a test stand for Raptors, which will allow up to two C-level engine firings per day. The same type of engine used on the Super Heavy booster and the center engines of the Starship. Prior to a 15-second test launch in May, construction on the new vertical stand began in January. The tripod, which was used to test Raptor engines, is still functional. To reduce noise and provide more force, Falcon 9 version 1.2 first stage tests are now conducted in a partially underground stand. Because the Super Heavy booster will use up to 33 sea level engines, the Raptor's three test stands and five engine bays are designed to accommodate a faster rate of engine testing than is required for regular operations. The sea level Raptor assembly plant's foundation work has begun while engine testing continues apace. There is a drive to finish this plant in time for flight testing and initial operations of the Starship slash Super Heavy. The test stand for Starship RCS, reaction control system, hot gas jets, boost back burns and other procedures would have been performed while the vehicle was in flight and they would have been utilized to control it. The jets have been tested, however, they will not be used for the time being, since engine gimballing and cold gas jets will be used instead. 
In addition to Raptor and Merlin test stands, test stands for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy cores, side boosters, and second stages for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the RCS stand is part of the reaction control system. The test stands used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy core stages are still operating strong and are utilized for the ongoing testing of individual Merlin units, as well as cores and side boosters. The Viasat 3 Falcon Heavy launch in 2019 is one example of this. It was recently spotted at McGregor. McGregor is still used to test every stage of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets before they are sent to their launch sites in Florida or California. Local officials are thrilled about the additional jobs and tax revenue that SpaceX's site and the new rocket factory will bring. There are 500 people employed at the McGregor test site currently, and the number will almost certainly rise as a result of the new factory's anticipated demand. The testing at McGregor will support the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions for the rest of the decade, if not longer, as long as the vehicles fly. Future Starship missions, such as Starlink 2.0 flights, Yasaku Maezawa's Dear Moon Crewed Lunar Mission, and the two demonstration HLS missions for Lunar Starship and Starship missions to build out Elon Musk's planned city on Mars, which could house a million people by 2050, will benefit from these testing activities. McGregor has housed a rocket testing site for the commercial space company for nearly two decades. As of 2003, it has been leasing the 120-acre property from the city. It expanded to 650 acres and is presently just shy of 4,300 acres. According to the city's 2020 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, the leasing deal was expanded last year and SpaceX has the option to acquire the site. As Musk predicted, the plant near Waco would produce two to four Raptor engines each day once production ramps up. According to Musk, they plan to make 800 to 1,000 engines per year. The reality is that having a firm like SpaceX in a little community like McGregor is huge, said Andrew Smith, executive director of the McGregor Economic. The launch site at Boca Chica Beach continues to grow while SpaceX expands its McGregor facility. Starbase, the launch site, will put the company's massive super heavy rocket to the test this month. There has never been anything like it in Texas before. One of the Starship prototypes will sit above the enormous rocket. The company's testing, launching, and manufacturing operations continue to grow assets in Texas, further cementing the state's importance to the company's overall success. Testing activities will further support future Starship missions, including Starlink 2.0 flights, Yasaku Maezawa's Dear Moon crew mission on the Lunar Starship, the two HLS demonstration missions on the Moon, and the Starship missions on Mars, which could house up to 1 million people by 2050 in the Elon's objectives of Mars. This is amazing. Let us see what happens next. With this, we have come to the end of our video. If you've loved it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more similar updates just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.